Welcome, everybody. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa, and today we're going to continue our series on DMD. So last time we uh, talked about the algorithm and the implementation of DMD, of the dynamic mode decomposition. And uh, today we're going to see what happens if our system is a little bit more complicated. It's not just uh, given by X prime equals a linear operator by X, uh, but we want to have also other inputs, other knobs that can be turned into the dynamics of our system. So this is what we call inputs and control. So we're going to uh, see what happens when our system has other inputs and we want to model all that through DMD. And then what happens also when we add some control. Uh, we could be talking about uh, flow control to try to reduce the drag, to try to improve the aerodynamics of our uh, flow case. Uh, but it could also be that uh, we have a pandemic and then we are trying to handle the pandemic with different actuations, uh, introduce lockdowns, uh, introduce vaccines, uh, and try to see how the system is changing with those parameters, with those inputs that are being applied uh, on the original dynamics of the system. So in a way, we don't have the undisturbed dynamics uh, anymore because we have additional factors that are playing a role uh, in the evolution of our system. Okay, so that's what we want to look at. Uh, basically, a situation that becomes more complex than the than the original dynamics of the system. So this section is called dynamics and control. So we're going to come in here. This is basically, um, and we're going to look at inputs. Yeah? So inputs. We're going to look also at control. Yep. So with DMD with dynamic mode decomposition, we can identify dynamics of the form. Dynamics of the form. And the dynamics of uh, that we're gonna be looking at is the snapshot matrix X k plus one equals to the linear operator a times x k. Okay, so this is what we're looking at here. So <clears throat> what if the system has inputs? What if there are knobs that we can turn in the system in such a way that we can uh, actuate, that we can uh, manipulate its uh, underlying dynamics? Well, what if the system has inputs? Basically, the dynamics will become x k plus one equals a times x k plus some other linear operator b that we're gonna introduce here times u, where capital U will be the uh, inputs, the inputs that we're considering in our system. Okay, so now the dynamics is going to be a times x k plus a b times u. Now, here, we're going to define our favorite matrices that we have been working on for a while and that allow us to calculate the, the, the DMD uh, implementation. So X prime will be the um, data matrix starting on the second snapshot and finishing in the last one. So basically, this would be <coughs> X2, X3, all the way until X Madrid. Okay, so this is my snapshot from the second to last. Then we're gonna look at the snapshot matrix that starts with X1, so we'll have here X2, and this is going to go all the way until the last one, X Madrid minus one, okay? So like this. Okay. Finally, the U matrix, which is basically the, the inputs that I'm considering, this U matrix, <clears throat> this is going to be U1, U2, and it goes all the way to UM minus one, U Madrid minus one. Okay, so again, these are column matrices where I'm having the input on its individual uh, snapshot. Okay, so my system is going to be given by X prime, okay, the, snap, the snapshot matrix starting from the second one, 
equals to A, which is the linear operator times X, which is the uh, original dynamic system, plus uh, B times U. Okay, this is how I can write my system. And this can be expressed in block form. So now uh, keeping in mind that we have, um, well, there's two different matrices, right? The X matrix and the U, which considers the, the input, basically. I can write this as follows. I can have a block matrix composed by A and B. And here, uh, this is gonna be a column block matrix where I have my X and my U, okay? So these two forms are equivalent, right? This means that I have A times X plus B times U. This means that if I want to find now, not only the linear operator A, but the linear operators A and B, which correspond to the uh, original dynamics and to the, um, and to the inputs that I'm uh, adding to my system, then I can basically solve this linear system <coughs> by inverting um, the, the matrix X and the matrix U. So I will use the pseudo inverse as usual in such a way that uh, my linear operators A and B are basically X prime, okay, like this. And I will post multiply okay, on, on, on the left-hand side by the pseudo inverse uh, of the block matrix X, U. So basically I'll have here X, I'll have here U, and this is as usual, the pseudo inverse, okay? And this is gonna be um, equation star, which I will use before, uh, later. Now, <clears throat> let's imagine, let's imagine that I want to also apply a certain control, okay? I want, I want to really actuate on my system. So with control, with control, Uh, I'm going to do something called DMDC, so DMD with control. And in this case, I want to characterize the system when there is an actuation. So remember, I'm going to have the original dynamics, which is given by the uh, matrix A, but the data that I have to extract those dynamics, to distill what the system looks like, is um, affected uh, by the actuations that I'm having. So if I want to really see what the system looks like without those actuations, then I need to take into account uh, and get an idea of what those actuations are, right? So I need to, in a way, decouple uh, from the observations that I have, from the data that I have, what is from the underlying physics of my system and what comes from the actuation that I'm applying on my system, okay? So this way, what we're gonna do is characterize a system, characterize a system, system uh, where there is a certain actuation, And some examples of this could be a disease. So I have, um, I'm looking at the spread of a disease. This could be a pandemic spread of disease, which is the original system. And I want to have intervention efforts, okay? So this is together with intervention efforts. These intervention efforts could be, for example, the vaccines, right? <clears throat> so how can I get the enforced dynamics? Okay, so the dynamics without those interventions, because that's what will really allow me to determine what happens with the original system. So I want to get the unforced dynamics. Well, we will use star, okay, equation star from before. Remember this block um, matrix equation. With U being the actuation. Now, um, we, we can also extend this framework to nonlinear terms, right? So 
This was um, an example where I have these inputs, and those inputs are basically the control. Um, so I can, you know, basically from here solve what happens to my to my linear system. But I can also consider nonlinear terms. Yeah? So let's imagine that we have nonlinear terms. So my system x dot is given by some A, matrix A, times the control X plus some uh, function of X. Okay, and this uh, could be nonlinear. Uh, that means that I can write this, instead of in vector form, I can write this in terms of the, of the matrix, uh, snapshot matrix. So basically what I have is my X dot, which is equal to my linear operator with control X times X plus some big matrix containing um, the different uh, nonlinear terms applied to the various uh, variables in my system. So this would be matrix F of X1, this is F of X2, and so on until F of X Norway. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a very similar, we can solve uh, for the parameter f, again, using equation star. So this is a very similar implementation to what we saw before, and then we can get the parameter set. So we can solve, we can solve for the parameter f, the parameters of f, in a similar manner, as in star, okay. so I can come up with a similar equation as equation star, just uh, it will be a bit more involved, so there is some extra work to do, but uh, in general the methodology is very similar, so basically we need some extra work. Yeah? But the philosophy is going to be very similar. Extra work, but essentially the same. Okay. So today, uh, that's all I wanted to cover. I wanted to just extend everything that we saw before about BMD and its implementation to cases where we actually have a control. We have a knobs that we can turn, we can actuate on my system. Uh, you can see that the methodology is actually quite similar. There is just uh, some extensions that one can do and a little bit of fine tuning. So we will have not only the linear operator A, but also the linear operator B, which has to do with the inputs, with the control of my system. In a nutshell, the approach is very, very similar. That's all for today. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have questions, if you want to discuss more. Uh, next time, we're going to look at something very exciting, which is Cindy for discovery of nonlinear dynamics. We'll talk about it in the next uh, video. For now, thank you for coming and see you next time. Bye.